full history of humankind. So the feeling was a deep and quiet excitement. Wow, there's no better place in the world. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-four, a man discovered a human skeleton that lived three point two million years ago. It was a female, and he named it Lucy. To date, Lucy is the exciting proof to the whole human being in our world that Ethiopia is the birthplace of humanity. Nineteen ninety-two, even a million years older than Lucy, Ardi. Who roamed the Earth 4.4 million years ago amazed the science world and asserted the fact that Ethiopia is indeed a land in which our ancestors stand upright, the land where the first human being worked on, and the place where everything began. 2006 Salam, another wonder to the science world, a three years baby girl who lived and died in the same land 3.3 million years back was publicized. Salam is the earliest child found more complete than Lucy's. Today we, I'm going to talk about the earliest and most complete infant early hominin ever found in the world. And this makes a history in the history of paleoanthropology itself. Growing in the farm, working with his father in California, Dr. Henry says he was always keen to work out in the field, spending 18 years here in Ethiopia exploring the major sites of human origin. Henry says each time he touched the fossil, the feeling is so unique. Each time I touch a fossil or a stone tool coming out of the ground, uh, I feel a sense of connection to the past. And that's something that is you know, something that you can only find here, right? It's something that when I'm in California, if I find a fossil, it might be interesting, but you're not connecting to the past of all humans. And every time I take something like that out of the ground, I have a little bit of a thrill because I know that this is the place where all of us were from. I know that this is the birthplace of humanity and that there's something very special about that, something incredible, you know? A renowned Ethiopian paleoanthropologist, Dr. Brahan Asfaw, spends more than 13 years of his age in the field. Dr. Barhana says Ethiopia is a place where any researcher on the field wants to be here all the time. Everything is just a footprint of, of the human past. So this is so unique. So if you are really an anthropologist, you don't want to be pushed out by anybody because this is a paradise for you. This is a place. That's why everybody is interested to come and work in Ethiopia. And I'm so proud that I'm so happy and I always think that I'm fortunate. So many, so many exciting times, you know. The most exciting time is once, it was in 1996 or 97. I was really tired. We were doing excavation. We were excavating this, this this hominid, this is a two and a half million year old hominid, it's called Autosopius Vizgarhi. But this excavation, this is a replica. When we were doing the excavation, it was very tough. The, the ground was very hard. And we were not finding so many, we were just, you know, bits and pieces here and there. Just in the middle of the excavation, around four o'clock, when we were all tired, I just walked away from the excavation. I, it, because I was really tired and bored. Because you're just, you know, your head is down on the ground and then just excavating the whole time. I walked away from the excavation. And I walked west, far from the excavation place, from everybody. I started surveying. When I was just surveying, I was just looking for a, fo for a fossil. From a distance, I, I saw glittering black fossils just littering the, uh, the whole ground and the sun was really down and it, it shines 
from a distance, and then I walked there. And I walked close, I picked up one bone, and it looks like a hominid. And I, and I was not sure is this really a hominid. Then I checked another one. It's just like the whole area was packed with fragments, about 100, over 100 pieces, just littered. And I was curious. First I said, I was so interested to find something. I thought maybe I'm, you know, I'm just convincing myself wrongly. It may be something else. Then I just kneeled down, I checked, and I found a, an isolated molar. Just a single, a single tooth. Mm -hmm. I looked at it and I was convinced. This is 100%, it's a human. Because uh, the, the, the pieces I found, even the fragmentary, they're just thin. Most human skulls are very thick. Then when I saw the teeth, yeah, it's a young guy, it's a young individual. It was a human child, about eight years old. It's a homo sapien, about 160,000 years old. Very important discovery. That was really exciting. My heart was pounding, you know? It's, it's a very exciting thing. Every site in this wonderland tells the story of our beginning, how we moved on, and how we covered our earth emerging out of it. Ethiopia is a country that tells the full chapter of the human past. There is no place in the world where you have moralness, the full history of humankind. From, you know, from way back, like six million years, all the way to the present. There is no other country. The only country that may compete with Ethiopia is Kenya. Even in Kenya, you don't get this same kind of succession of human remains through time. Because it's only here where you find. In Kenya, they have more or less the same age, but in between, ours are fully represented. Not, you know, full is always relative. We have fossils from six million years. We have fossils from 5.8, 5.2. 4.5, you know, 4.2, 4.8, you, know, you just you keep going and everything is just a footprint of, of the human past. So this is so unique. But this little girl, who is only three years old, but died 3.3 million years ago, 150,000 years before Lucy, is a little girl, but is also a grandmother telling us a lot of stories about our past. I think this would be a fantastic specimen introducing our nation along with other discoveries, thus adding incredibly to the wealth of heritage that our nation has. Ethiopia is kind of at the center of, it's a crossroads in the old world. You see an intersection of many different cultures. And in fact, from what I study, I know that it's the origin of all the cultures. Homo sapiens, our species, comes from Ethiopia. And some Homo sapiens spreads out to the rest of the world. So for all those reasons, it's fascinating. It's fascinating to see to see the, the, the wide range of cultures and the mix of cultures that you see here. <laughs> of course, the thing that interests me the most is the paleontology and fossils, and wow, there's no better place in the world. <laughs> it studies uh, the human past uh, before the beginning of writing. So for that period, we don't have writing, the writing materials to study human past. We are relying on archaeology and archaeological findings. So it's very important from the point of view of tracing the human past. And it's also very important for the creation of a uh, shared identity and common and national interest to develop common national uh, uh, interest within each country. The three female skeletons were small-brained, 
lived in woodland environment and didn't make stone tools. And hence, our ancestors back there were eating only fruits and vegetables. Then civilization began taking scores when they start making tools out of the stones with different sizes for different purposes. And that was of course before our ancestors start coming out of their first home, Ethiopia, and spread out to the whole world. This is a, an Ashleyan hand axe. It's a stone tool that was used by human ancestors starting about one and a half million years and continuing in use up to about 100,000 years. In fact, in some modern societies, you still see ceremonial use of these kinds of tools. They don't use them for functional reasons anymore, but uh, hand axes and actually in technology are one of the longest lived types of stone tools that you find uh, associated with human ancestors. We also find a lot of other small tools. It's important that we don't focus only on the large tools, even though they're more beautiful. Mm -hmm. People are using lots of different types of tools, and these are sort of the biggest ones that you find in this, in this time period. Uh, but yes, the middle Pleistocene is what we call this time. It's about 500,000 years old. And this is a time when all of our ancestors were here. There were other hominids outside of Africa, but they were not our ancestors. Using the tools, the, the humans, the first humans, started accessing meats, which is very important for our brain, and fats, a lot of energy. Because, you know, I'm sure they were eating, they were eating more or less the same, same kind of food, but not in plenty, because they have to struggle with highness, because they have to scavenge, they can't hunt. They don't have big teeth. So getting a sharp edge like tools is a big, a big breakthrough for these early humans. The thing is, I studied I study psychology, so we've done a lot of evolutionary psychology, and, and basically we talk a, a lot about how people lived back, not, not when Lucy lived, but a couple of million years before, and how, how, how the environment here in Africa shaped all the human beings into what we are today. So the evolutionary surrounding shaped all our emotions and all those things. You don't have that perspective here, but it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing. You, you see the fossils, you see what, what, what it's all about and how they live here. Listed forefront in every endeavor for the search of human beginning, Ethiopia continues to amuse the science world and hence those famous sites in the country are cutting more attention in research tourism. Ethiopia is a really special place. Uh, the way that science is structured here is different than a lot of places. There's an internal integrity, there's a scientific community within Ethiopia that when you're working here, you're working with the scientists, right? You're, you're, you're interfacing with a scientific infrastructure that exists. On my own team, I have Russian archaeologists, Mexican archaeologists. It's an international team of, of researchers, and uh, this science is one that's growing. And this science is one that is seeing an increase in how people understand that it has the power to bring people together. And Ethiopia will be the center of that. You can't stop it. The fossils are here. We gain so much from their coming to our laboratory. They add, they study our fossils. When they study their fossils, they live in, in the city, in Addis. They stay in hotels. They use, you know, taxis. They are just like tourists. The professional world and the other people interested in human evolution, they know about Ethiopia. But they know it in bits and pieces. Because I've heard about Lucy about almost 35, 40 years ago, 1974, since 1974. They've heard lots of new findings announced every day. But it is our job to show to the world Ethiopia is one of the wonders, the wonderlands.
the, the most fascinating country in the world, where all species found in this world, almost all of them, except two, they were all found in Ethiopia. As a scientist, uh, we base our discussion and our knowledge on evidence. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, the earliest evidence of our species, Homo sapiens, exists in Ethiopia. And it's from a time before there's Homo sapiens in any other place in the world. It's from a time before Homo sapiens is in the western, or is in the whole part of Eurasia. Uh, so the evidence points to Ethiopia as where it all began for our species, Homo sapiens. It also points to Ethiopia for the earliest hominid ancestors. After the split with our closest animal relatives, the chimpanzees, the earliest fossils that you find are in sub-Saharan Africa, and some of the earliest are inside of Ethiopia. So in two ways, this is where it all began. Being the birthplace of humanity goes way beyond any wonders our world has to date. The sites and these priceless findings truly deserve the utmost protection and recognition. What is uh, known more publicly is the, the World Heritage Site, the World Heritage Sites. The wonders of the world is also another, uh, another, uh, another side of uh, the uh, uh, another side of tracing or the, uh, the other side of uh, promoting the famous world heritage sites. So Ethiopia uh, is also uh, deserve to have uh, world heritage sites which can be also included into the wonders of the world. There are many sites in Ethiopia which deserve uh, to become the world heritage sites and which fulfill the criteria both for the cultural and natural heritage sites. Indeed, the science world acknowledged and reaffirmed this is a place where it all begins. That's why coming to Ethiopia should be the first among the must see list of every human being. You come to this place, never go back being the same. So when they come to Ethiopia, it's not like coming to Rome and see the Roman Empire. That's one episode in history. When you come to Ethiopia, you walk on the land that people walked for six million years, human beings. Different species, like 11 different human species. They lived and passed, they lived and passed in this country. And you know, this is the place from which every human beings that you see all over the world evolved out of. The National Museum in Addis Ababa is where you may start exploring ample evidence of our beginning as a human being among the immense priceless Ethiopian heritage. I have many discoveries and uh, uh, like from one region afar we have about uh, nine different discoveries, including the toes. Uh, it will be 11, and it's possible to see the evolutionary change of a human ancestor. And when I'm showing like uh, Dinkanash, by the way, it's more better to call Dinkanash than Lucy. That is an uh, Ethiopic name. So it is more pride to us if we call her uh, Dinkanash. And then many people, when we show about uh, Ardi, about uh, Salam, about Dinkanash, about the grandfather of all modern people, we call him Idalto. So many people say, feel surprised. And it is a miracle to them. Oh, you are right. So you can claim that Ethiopia is a cradle of all human ancestors. I don't know how many people actually go to Ethiopia and visit it, and they should. You know, I think more should come here. I think that's going to happen. 
the cradle of mankind is in Ethiopia. I mean, I, I don't think that there's any doubt, no doubt about it. I mean, even if you look biblically, I, I believe that. So, um, and I just like to find out more. I'm, I'm a real fanatic about history and anthropology and all that other kind of stuff. So I just want to find out more and, and um, be able to understand it and to see it, actually. I always wanted to see this, and now I get an opportunity to do it. <laughs> so you know you're Ethiopians too. Everybody yes, that's life. right. We all come from the same people. <laughs> It's fascinating all the things they have here and, and the um, historical background that exists here in Ethiopia. The Rift Valley, all the fossils that they found. So it's, it's interesting and it's a lot of nice and interesting things. We came here was uh, to see Lucy. Um, she is so famous and I heard so much about her. Mm -hmm. So we really are interested to see the skeleton and it's also, um, yeah, it, it, it's like um, a good opportunity to, to see the skeleton and this early beginning of, uh, of the woman, of the human um, history. I feel it's, uh, I'm like a homo sapiens sapiens and she was one of the first who walked upstairs, who, who walked on like two us. legs. Yeah. She was, it, it looked, uh, for me, I, I was uh, astonished that, that uh, she was so small. Yeah. yeah. So Did you expect her like a much more bigger? A bit, a bit. I know that yeah. the previous um, humans were smaller um, as we, yeah. but uh, I expect her a bit uh, taller. Originated from Australia, Dana flew to Addis from New York City just hours before we met her in the National Museum. Couldn't wait to get to see Lucy. <laughs> I had a date. Well, it's just incredible to think how old fossils are, but I realize that that's not the original, yeah. that they are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's a sweet little thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know, it's quite just amazing to think about the, the age and the discovery of the skeleton and the area she comes from. Mm -hmm. When you come to this place, it's just like coming to, the, you know, to a place where you see the whole chapters of human history. Six million years of human history. Human history is all about understanding who we are so as to see our future. And this is a place where one should turn to in both cases.